Well, sorry about that. I thought I had deleted the video log from last time, so it's going to be a video in two parts, I guess. Um, I, believe, I feel like that honestly wraps up anything I had to say about reforming the judiciary system. You just need to change it so that we're not at the such a mob rule, so that justice can actually be done. Okay? Because, you know, it, it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I, feel, I feel like it should make perfect sense to everyone, but it just doesn't. It's just arguments that have never been presented, and anything that attacks democracy or republics or republicanism is automatically viewed as the devil. You know, you're automatically a Nazi. First off, unless someone is actually a fucking Nazi, stop calling them fucking Nazis. Believe me, I deal with Nazis regularly. They're a real political party, a movement, a thing. You know, communism is a real thing. Please stop calling people these names unless they are actually Nazi, National Socialists or Communists, okay? These w words mean things. Please use them correctly. Moving on. Um, I also wanted to talk a bit about, you know, on the judiciary system, you know, why is it important that we reform the judiciary system? You know, it's like, okay, well, Kaiser, I follow you on this, you know, but why? You know, why should we do this? Well, first off, it's founded in tradition. The older Roman systems, the older centralized systems of judiciary rulings, you know, when they were not prejudiced, were better systems. You know, I mean, you know, justice was done much smoother and much better. Now, secondly, you know, the reason is, I talked about, you know, if you mentioned what spurred this on was seeing a bunch of rulings passed by our judiciary system that have to do with the pro-life movement and things. No wonder people are skittish about the pro-life movement or about conservatives, you know, passing these new laws when the versions of them that are like, you know, conservatives of light that already exist on the books screw people horribly for just the most banal things. I mean, is it any wonder they don't trust us? Is it any wonder they don't like us? They assume we know these things. You know, they assume this is what we know. This is what we want. It's the same thing Republicans do to Democrats. They assume that Democrats all want, you know, like the most awful thing they can think of. It's it's, it's one of those things where it's so absurd to me that th to think that, you know, both sides, like I said, you know, Nazism actually means something. You know, the, the phrase is a, it's a phrase that denotes a political belief. You know, they both call each other Nazis. You know, both sides of Democrats and Republicans, uh, you know, accuse them, accuse the other side of wanting to enact 1984. You know, and to me, it's hilarious because it's like, wow. You know, it's like, wow. You know, you both are afraid of the same thing and you're accusing the other person of doing the same thing. What you don't see are the people pulling your strings, making you argue with each other, laughing all the while as they proceed to do the exact thing you're afraid of. You know, it just, it, it boggles the mind. It, 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 rail, it rails against the senses to think that this is a thing. Just, you know, you can't, it, it's something to think about, you know? Before I would pass any kind of law in the judiciary system of America, before I would enact any legislation that would be enforced with, with the powers of the law, you know? I would reform the judiciary in such a way that the laws can be passed justly. And further on that note, we need to start looking at some of these laws we have and ask why we have them. You know, we need to look at, you know, precedent and we need to say, okay, but here's the problem with court cases that aids and abets the current system. Our law, our, our law system is based on English common law, which bases a lot of itself on precedent. You know, previous rulings, which lawyers convince juries to pass, you know. Um, why don't we just, well, why don't we just, you know, what was I, what would I, how would I say this? Why don't we just smack down some of these precedents that contradict each other and pick one, okay? Because the law is the law, okay? You know, you break the law, you get punished, you get your due, okay? You make your reparation in society. 
All right, that's how it should be. We should have conflicting precedents because that in itself is its own mess of injustices, you know, because it aids and abets the legal system that we have at present, which, as I've established, is broken. Because you have people who argue over these precedents that conflict each other equally. You know, they one side, you know, a case where something where A happens in one case revolving around case A, this ruling happened. In another case revolving around case A, this ruling happened. And they conflict. And then they're both arguing because according to precedent, they both have an argument. And it's just it's just such garbage. It's like, seriously? Did he break the law or not? You know? Did he break the law or didn't he? You know, who decides the law? You know, what? from which is the wellspring of authority? You know, that these are questions we need to ask ourselves. Are we seriously going to let bought out lawyers decide how exactly our legal system should function? You know, when they clearly are biased, they clearly, most of them are clearly have an agenda. Most of them clearly have an agenda. I mean, just simple question you need to ask yourself, people. Wake up. It's really important that you ask yourself these questions. Because your opposition is not unreasonable. You know, it's not. You're, you know, generally speaking, they probably just want the same thing you do. Evidence by the fact that, as I said, at least in America, both sides, Democrats and Republicans, accuse each other of wanting to enact a 1984-esque future and force it on the people. You know, but that's the thing they both fear. If anything was ever a manifest example of how divided our, policy, our politics are and how, you know, shameless both sides are and their mad grasses for power and what they will do to obtain that power when that's all some of them really care about on one end and on the other end most of them are just scared to death of the other side which totally shuts down any compromise that should be the evidence right there in black and white clear as crystal you can't ignore it anymore so just these are things we have to fix, okay? We can't simply pass new laws in a broken system that already hurts people. We have to remove the system that hurts people, then pass these good laws, which even a bad system can ruin because of bad rulings. I mean, that's the only way to fix it. You know, if you're going to bring tradition back into the fold, if you're going to introduce Catholic social values to a people, you have to recreate the system in which these values flourish and help people. You know, you can't just, um, you know, force the, you can't just force laws into a system for which they were not made, you know, and you can't make laws that just, you know, based on tradition that were never laws actually in the first place, they just happen. So, I mean, it's like, you know, there was no systematic system that kept, necessarily kept women out of power or kept you know, women from being soldiers in the medieval period. It's just how the culture shaped and took form and it happened. It's the same thing that happened with America and with modernizing, with modern Europe. The culture changed. Hearts and minds were one to a different side, even if it ended up being detrimental to us. This is why I tell people, we absolutely must, we absolutely must change hearts and minds. We cannot just press down with an iron boot on any on anything and everything. You know, we need our iron boots. But when you use them indiscriminately, you ultimately lose sight of the problem, which is that there are the, the breed of men, that weak strain that will bow to any kind of show of force is rare, few, and far between. You have to take into account for that. You have to win people's hearts and minds, you know, because the fact is, if you can't do that, you will never, ever, ever see a system that you and I want that will survive. We have, the modern enlightenment principles are like a disease, okay? The principles that have torn down, the heresy that has torn down our culture and our civilization was, is a disease. It's a mental disease. We have to remove it. We have to cure it. We have to fix it. If we don't do that, 
then we will never find ourselves at a point where we'll never find ourselves at a point where uh, we'll never find ourselves at a point where our system is working for more than a generation or two. And I'm sorry, people, that's just facts. I mean, if you wanted your nice, bloody, violent counter-revolution, I somewhat share your, 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 your sentiment that something needs to happen. Good for you. But you have to ask yourselves this question. Are you willing to trade, you know, a brief, uh, you know, a brief lifetime or a brief moment of, you know, bloodshed and, you know, whatever else you want? Are you willing to trade to have that and in exchange for that, trade away the future of your children? You know, look at Franco, you know, look at Dolphus, look at, you know, all these other factions, you know, fascist regimes whose basic goal at least stated, even if it wasn't really true, you know, I've established before a lot of them were just usurpers, their stated goal was the rebirth of a Christian civilization, supposedly. First off, they had no idea what that actually was. Secondly, they twisted history to fit their goal. But thirdly, thirdly, they failed to capture the hearts and minds. They didn't do the work. They didn't, you know, convince people that this system was good. They didn't talk to the people, you know, these extreme radicals just took control of the government and forced their way onto everyone else. And what happens when that, and what happens when you do that? The government falls apart. The people of a nation are not just the mob. The people of a nation are its whole sum, are everyone involved from the lowest to the highest. Those are the people of a nation, okay? It's not just the mob, it's not just the proletariat or whatever. And everybody has known, every great ruler has known that if you do not have the hearts and minds of your people, if you do not rule over the hearts and minds of your people, you rule over nothing. You have no power, no authority. You know, your legitimacy, de jure, is everything. But de facto, it means nothing. If the Stuarts and the Carlist claimants had successfully claimed the fr throne of France, of their respective countries, but the people didn't want them, if the people did not believe in that legitimacy, it meant nothing. It means squat diddly zero, okay? You have to work with people. You have to be patient, long-suffering, kind. You have to be kind but forceful. You know, like Francis de Sales. St. Francis de Sales, you have to be kind but forceful, you know? You can't just let people, you know, trod all over these, you, know, you can't just let, you can't just trample people and expect them to like it, you know, or bow down at your might and worship you. That's not how real life works. And I promise you, you will find a million and one historical examples of this approach not working. Okay, if your whole goal is to establish a long-standing government or nation and dynasty, you need to look at ways in which it was done successfully, climates under which it was done successfully, and you need to learn from that and you need to act on it. That's what I intend to do. We have to look at the reality of the situation and work with it. You can't work with what you would like things to be, you know? You can't work with just what you would like to do. You have to deal with the fact that at some point, somebody probably me, is going to have to sit out somewhere at a mall or a college campus with pamphlets at a table with a flag or something and talk to people as they come by, convince them of our arguments, you know, somebody at some point is going to have to stand up, organize people and have demonstrations, you know, do something that cannot be ignored, you know, make a statement, force your voice to be heard, you know, refuse to be silenced, that's what you're going to have to do. You will be unable to simply sit there and bark at people until they agree with your reasoning, okay? You can't do that. You will not be able to do that. Because people don't work that way. You know, that's not how, that's not how any animal behaves. You know, you can talk, you know, it's just, you have to convince people, bottom line. 
And this is why I think we need to reform the judiciary system. We have to first show people that we understand the system is broken. We understand it doesn't work. Let us give you our system that works. Okay? Because, yeah. I mean, I could rant for days about this. And I feel like I've given, I've got my point across. That we need to change everything. Even hearts and minds. Uh, I'm working on the Imperial Manifesto still, uh, ironing out some details. It's something that re that's requiring a lot of thought and a lot of reading. It's 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 a big project for me. And then I have to figure out how I'm going to reduce it to like pamphlet or booklet size. You know, I have to figure out that uh, something that's easy for people to read, something that's easy to understand that answers all their questions. You know, in a single statement. You know, and I have to figure out how to present it to people. You know. These are all hugely important questions we need to ask ourselves, all right? And ultimately, if we can't answer these questions, if we can't bring ourselves to get out in the streets and do the whole hearts and minds thing, and if we insist on just waiting to get our asses kicked again, then we're going to keep losing. If you follow the conservative and traditional and do what conservatives have been doing that's caused them to lose or at least traditional conservatives, which caused us to lose, and you know, allow yourself to be dragged down with these other conservative movements who fail, you're going to ultimately and completely find yourself, you know, looking for, you know, you're just going to find yourself failing. That's what's going to happen. You're going to find that you are failing. And is that what you want? Do you want us to keep dealing with the world we have today? I don't think you do. And I'm pretty sure at some point you told yourself, I will do whatever it takes to make the counter-revolution happen. That to make the counter-reformation a resounding success. I will do anything to restore the powers of Christendom. I will do anything it takes. Well, then you need to realize what happened if that do whatever it takes didn't involve battle yet. What if it didn't involve that? What if it involved, what if it involved just convincing people? You know, these are the questions to ask. All right, these are very important questions to ask. All right, I think that's a good note to end on. I'm gonna have to upload this in two parts, so it will take a while. When I have finished both parts, I will upload them, and I will leave the link to the first part and link to the second part in the description. Um, all right, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, I'm almost to my college now. I've actually gone on for a lot longer than I usually do. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Uh, happy Easter and. Please leave a like, share, comment, subscribe if you want more. Uh, let me know what you think. I like hearing people comment on these things. I like seeing their input. Okay. Um, so I look so I look forward to hearing from you guys. And last but not least, happy Easter.